years ago, man, back in the 90s, you were on my uh, sitcom. Yes. And you came on the show with P. Diddy. That was in the middle of that, what they were trying to drum up and create the West Coast, East Coast beef. It was really tense back then. Why'd you want to do, like, something like that? Uh, because I wanted to show that I really had love for Puffy and he had love for me, and I just wanted to show people that it wasn't all what it was trumped up to be. You know, they made it like it was more than what it actually was. We actually loved each other. We loved the music that we made. It was just some differences between a few people. And this was an opportunity for us to come on your show and to do something together and to show the whole world that we actually loved each other. Yeah. You know, a, a few weeks ago now, Ice-T uh, did an investigative TV special. I seen that. To find Biggie and Tupac's killer. And he spoke to Suge Knight who eluded that Tupac may possibly be alive. What you think? That's, that's good TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, but I, you know, my, my homeboy is rest in peace. And then at the same time, I know people still want him to be here and they, they love him so much to where his legacy, you know, it overwhelms everything. But at the same time, you gotta know and understand when, when God takes you home, he takes you home and that's, that's where you are. And you went here. Yeah, him. really? You at home. Yeah. So next year, marks the 25th anniversary of your first album, Doggy Style. What was your favorite memory making that album? The music that we made, we were in a, you know, gang-related area, but we wanted to make music for people outside of that area. We wanted to make music to make people have a good time. And every time we was at the studio, you could just feel that, that magic. And as I'm, you know, 20-something years into my career, it's hard finding that magic in the studio. And when, and when you got it, it's special, and that's what that was. That's what that reminds me of, is that magic that we had in the studio where we, we, we wasn't doing it for money. Yeah. This is gonna be a good question. What would the present-day Snoop tell the 1993 Snoop? What, what would you tell this guy right here? What would I tell him? Man, keep doing what, keep doing what you're doing because you're going to become me one day by doing you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Uncle Snoop is also Granddaddy Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get roped into watching all the kids' shows on TV? You got to watch it with them? Steve, I'm going to tell you the truth. I done watched so many kids' shows that I'm going to create one now because... <laughs> Yeah. Because I, I feel like, I feel like with my, through my grandson, him watching all of these great things and these, you know, learning experiences on, on television and on video or whatnot, it's not a hip hop element there. It's not a, my element. And I feel like the kids love me, so why not give them something? You know what? So, Kind of like a show as yourself, maybe a Snoop character, Snoop yeah. Dogg character, but teaching kids something. Yeah, sort of kind of like how Mr. Rogers was, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? When you, nah, get, when, you nah. get, when you get up... No, that's not a... That's, that's not a good comparison, Snoop. Listen to no. me, Steve. Steve, no, listen no, to no, me. No, no, Just okay. hear me out. All right, all right, I'm glad I'm here, y'all. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. I'm saying the communication with... with the person and the kids. Just that, just that element, the communication. Just the connection. The connection, yeah. Okay, because I was gonna say, you're to... nothing like Mr. No. Rogers. Then I, I, would, I would educate them on waking up in the morning, you know, brushing my teeth and do, combing my hair and having breakfast <laughs> and getting ready for school and making sure I do my homework. You know, the things the kids like, and then the alphabets and the numbers, and but make it have a hip-hop swing where it's like A, B, C, D, <laughs> E. F G. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be cool. See, most of my ideas start off like that, Steve, where I'm the only one that believes in it in the beginning. Yeah. And, and then it comes to life because it's all from a great place. It's from my heart. And it's like, I don't like to speak on it unless I feel like I can bring it to life. You have to dream. And if you dream, that dream may come reality. Hey, I want to talk about something. Uh, you've got a youth football league. Yes, sir. Now, listen to this, folks. 13 of Snoop's players have made it to the NFL. 100 of them are in Division I college football programs, and 150 of them are in high school football right now. 
right now. It's a blessing, Steve, to, to take to take what God has given me, he's given me an opportunity to become successful. And for me to take this amount of my success and to install it into this has created a whole new birth of a generation of young men and young girls and young citizens that's gonna grow up and be productive in that's life right. and do something different than what they're accustomed to. That's right. Hey folks, stick around, don't go anywhere. We got more with Snoop right after the break. All right, everybody, uh, I'm back with hip-hop legend Snoop Dogg, who is, uh, this is what he's here to talk about because he's making his theatrical stage debut in the new musical, Redemption of a Dog. <laughs> which is also co-starring the one and only Tamar Braxton. <laughs> How you doing, Tamar? I'm so good. Oh, uh, this is gonna be good. The redemption <laughs> of a dog. Before we talk about the musical, Snoop, you got a cookbook coming out. Yeah, yeah. Yay! At the end of the month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what kind of recipes is in your cookbook? <laughs> what? Well, uh, I mean, you know, the book is called From Crook to Cook. So off the tippy, you know we got some hood. We got some hood recipes in there. Some hood recipes. I got one recipe that I know you 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 really be kind of is uh the fried bologna sandwich with barbecue chips Ooh, in the inside. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Hold up, dog. You telling people <laughs> how to fry the bologna with the barbecue chips on the sandwich? Yes, sir. Mm, 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 it's a blessing. That's one of the legendary hood sandwiches. <laughs> Let me tell you something, if you ain't had this, you need to get this cookbook. And then, it, and then it goes from there to like a lobster thermidor. Really? Oh yeah, I'm cuisining on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cuisining on it. Yeah. What is Redemption of a Dog about? Redemption of a Dog is a play that, you know, stars me, Tamar, and a beautiful cast that we have. It's the story of a, of a man trying to find the right way to live. And, and through his searches, he loses his legacy, his fame, and eventually his life, which is his wife. And he has no one to turn to but God. And he finds himself back through God to get that experience with putting his life back together. So it's a great story of redemption. Tamar plays my angel, so I depend on her to help me get my life right. <laughs> Hey, Ma, you play an angel? I do. Uh, this is gonna be good. It is. I'm coming to the first night before y'all fix anything. <laughs> I, want, I want to be there the first night before y'all go, wait a minute. <laughs> Tamar, you the angel. Because <laughs> I know they are gonna say that. What, what, what's that been like for you? Oh, it's been amazing. I let him be who he is. You know, I'm not judging what he do. Everybody know he smoke. I don't talk about him smoking. And I, I, I actually encourage it. What is this dynamic like for you two working together? You know what? I've always been a fan of her and her music and everything that she's brought to the table since she came in the game. When I got with you, Carries Johnson, the, uh, the writer and the director, your name was first on the list and we didn't have no, no backups. It wasn't no seconds. It was like, go get her. We want her. Know that. He's no. So no, let me. Tamar, your sister Tony told me the best singer in our family is Tamar. She's mm. the best singer. And that girl, Tony Braxton. Hello. <laughs> She's amazing. Now, when you co starring together, you, you find out a lot about each other right. and some habits that you may like, but some maybe not so much. So I thought that it would be a cool thing and a fun thing to do to find out a little bit more about Snoop and Tamar in a game that I'm calling, Who Is It? <laughs> now, uh, I'm gonna give each one of you a fan with each other's picture on it. Oh, that's a church fan, praise God. Only do it, <laughs> if you let him. <laughs> okay, now, I want you to look at the pictures and I want you to answer the question by showing the picture of who it is. First question, who messes up they lines more? For sure, be honest. Yeah, it's me. It's you? It's me, let me tell you something. To be honest, we got our scripts. He was off book. 
the next day. Off, off book means you don't use No your script, script, nothing. We did the table read the night before, and this was at 9 o'clock I went home. The next day at noon, he was off the book. Like, he's so professional. No, really, I was astonished. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> hey. Ask him, Lord. Next question. <laughs> Who's more likely to be late to the set? And the set is at my spot, I was and I'm say still that. late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that your studio? Yes, and I'm still the late, the last one in there. Every day. I'm just on CP time. I gotta, I gotta learn how to shake that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. All right. <laughs> Who's the loudest on the set? Oh, come. Damn. The audience is answering. <laughs> 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 wait, but <laughs> wait, Tamar. Did you hear the crowd? Hey, I said, who the loudest on the set? Tamar? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know she crazy. <laughs> All right, last question. Who's the most helpful? Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's helpful. <laughs> so, okay, so guys, let, let me set this up. So, Redemption of a Dog, yeah. Snoop and Tamar Braxton. It's a musical. Yeah. It's gonna be hitting theaters when? October 5th in Houston. Oh, it's gonna start in Houston? In Houston. Yes, October 5th. And, uh, how many cities are you thinking about doing? We're doing about 25 cities, man. Right? Coming to a hood near you. Coming to a hood near you. <laughs> Listen up, everybody. Get your tickets now to Redemption of a Dog. Snoop and Tamar are gonna be hitting a city near you starting on October the 5th. I wanna give a special thanks to Tamar Braxton. <laughs> Special thanks, Snoop Dogg. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> well, y'all, you're gonna love this. I got a couple of icons for you today and a couple of close friends. One is an R&B legend. The other is a hip-hop legend. <laughs> Together, they have combined for 28 Grammy nominations and a new album together that has reached number one on the gospel charts. The Bible of Love. Everybody, welcome Snoop Dogg and Charlie Wilson. This is music royalty that just walked out here. Now look, I would have known both of you cats, man, for years. Charlie, since the 90s, man. I mean, we've been dudes. Now, and Charlie, you actually convinced Snoop to quit smoking for a year. Yeah. You should have seen his face when I pulled him into his kitchen. <laughs> I was like, yo, dog, I'm going to holler at you for a second. So he's like, word. So when I came out, I said, listen, sit down for a second. He was looking at me like, sit down, you know? So I was like, you know, check this out, man. You need to quit smoking, you know? And he was like... <laughs> <laughs> word? I was like, yeah, you need to quit, man. You know, you got wife, you got some kids. And about 15 seconds, he says, okay. And um, I checked on him day after day, week after week. He didn't touch nothing. I saw him in that time period. Yeah, yeah. He was with me on the show. I said, Snoop, yeah. how you holding? Man, everything clear. Yeah. Snoop, <laughs> <laughs> everything clear. Uh, I remember when you, you looked me in my eyes, Steve, you, you said, man, I ain't never seen your eyes that clear yeah. before. No, I've never. <laughs> hey, man, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you grew up listening to Charlie and the yes, Gap so. Band. How'd you guys meet and become friends? Well, I had seen Charlie at AMPM once upon a time when he wasn't doing so well and he was actually on, in, on drugs. And I seen him and I was like, man, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna do something with you. Cause it was just something that I, I don't even know what it was. So I had ended up getting a studio 
and I had contacted Val Young, yep, Val Young. Lady V. <clears throat> and I told Lady V, I said, go get Charlie Wilson. I want him in the studio. And she brought him in the studio, and he was coming in there working with us every day. This lady was with him. And she was coming in every day, and she was always telling us, y'all can't smoke around him, y'all can't. We were like, hold on, how you gonna tell us what we can do? And we'll... <laughs> One day, this lady pulled me to the side. She was like, let me tell you something. You ain't finna be smoking around Charlie. You ain't finna... If you smoke, I ain't bringing him back no more. So we stopped smoking around him. He didn't do no drugs. He got his life right. She helped us shape our life. <laughs> and and the, moral, the moral of the story is that he ended up marrying this lady who was his counselor, and she was that concerning for his life yep. that he ended up making her his wife, and she's my auntie now, and I want to thank her for doing <laughs> what she did. That changed things. You ain't got to be stuck in your life, man. Snoop, you got a new gospel album. Snoop presents the Bible of love. This is like an all-star gospel album we got, man. You got, you got Charlie Wilson. You got Patti LaBelle. You got the Clark sisters. What made you want to create it? My grandmother. Um, she loved me dearly, and I could never play any of my, of my music for her. I used to go to her house, and she'd be watching Jimmy Swagger, and she'd watch him back to back and just singing all this music. And I was trying to figure out how could I make some music to where my grandmother could enjoy it. And when she passed away, spirit came over me at the funeral because my auntie was singing a song about my grandmother called Let Your Work Speak For You. So I was like, you know what? I need to let my work speak for me. I need to go make a record that is about, about the love that I have, about the spirit that I have, about my upbringing, about just me celebrating love and just putting love in the air because there's so much negativity and hate in the world. <clears throat> and that's how you answer it with a positive project like this. So I went in and just did it to call all my friends and all my people in the church world. They all said yes, they jumped in, and here we have it, number one album, four weeks in a row. Today, there's somebody else here who wants to help you play. You okay with that? Yes, sure. Okay, cool. All right, come on out. One of the OG godfathers of hip hop. Yeah. Snoop, how you been, man? I'm good, Steve. I'm chilling, man. Enjoying good, life. good. I see you, boy. Yes, sir. I see That's you what too. I'm trying. I'm trying to slim down. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Probably ain't gonna be able to get that far down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, hey, Snoop, you ready to help Donna win some I'm money? I'm gonna help her get a whole lot of money. Okay, cool. <laughs> Snoop, my dude, he just come through for anything. Yay. So here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna put 20 pictures up on the board. Let's turn around so you can see. I'm gonna put 20 pictures up on the board. We got your picture up there too. You got 60 seconds to match them. Every time you match a picture, I'm gonna give you $100. You got 60 seconds. If you match all 10, you can walk out of here with $1,000. Woo! Now Snoop, you gotta help her. I got a good memory, too, so I, I'm good at this kind of game. What do you? <laughs> Snoop. I heard so, that. Somebody <laughs> said, do you, Snoop? Do it, do you? Yeah. Yeah. He got good ill, Ill rap yeah, star. Yeah, on pop on. You got to remember all these lyrics. Yeah, I'm going to show you. I can show you better than I can tell you. OK, good. All right, now you get over there. Snoop going to help you. All right, now this is what we're going to do. We're going to flip them over. Scramble them up. Oh, wow. Now, the way this works, I want you to call out two numbers. If I flip them over and they match, I give you 100 bucks. If they don't match, remember where they are, call out two other numbers really quick. Snoop will be helping you out the entire time. So will the audience. Your time will start after you pick the first two numbers. One in 20. 120. Five and eight. Five, eight. Eight, 20. Eight, 20. 820. 820. There you go, Snoop. Go All right, 7 and 12. 7 12. 13 and 14. 9 and 4. 
Six matches, so that means you won six hundred dollars. One, Thank two, you. three, no, no, no. four, five, six. Hold on, Steve. Wait a minute. I got a few dollars to add to the hundred. Yeah, two hundred, like three hundred, four hundred. That makes a thousand. Woo! But wait a minute. Twelve hundred, so he can get him a new bow tie. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> How about it? Thank you. Hey, you made it to the end of this video. I got a lot more that you're gonna enjoy, so just click to watch the next one. And make sure you subscribe to always know what's happening.